If you're one of those kind of people, if you have Letterboxd or something, and you start to rank all the movies you see, uh, there's always... I wonder if you ever hit that point where uh, you're, you're like, ah, this list needs to be a little bit longer. So you just go out and see something. Maybe not go out and watch something, but just turn on something here that happened to come out this year so it can go on your list. Uh, this was the case for this one. Uh, I watched Knights of the Zodiac. This is one of the rare moments in when I watch movies that I legitimately had no idea what this was. I, not even up until the credits of this, where it says that this is based on a manga called Saint Seiya, and it's by Masami Kurumada. Even after that, looking through uh, Letterbox to see what other people think of this, this being compared to Dragon Ball Evolution, a uh, a, a, a disaster, a complete disaster of a movie, really says something. On top of that, this actually came out in theaters like two months ago. I didn't hear about this. There are famous people in this. Uh, Famke Jansen is in this. Uh, Mark Dacascos, Sean Bean, uh, one of the one of the kids from the newer Jumanji movies. I didn't hear about this at all, and I guess no one did because I decided to look up like. What, what the money was, what kind of money we were dealing with for this movie. Uh, and I usually don't like to bring in box office as a negative connotation. I try not to do that too often when it comes to like reviews and videos. But I, on a $60 million budget, not, not a bad budget, not bad by any means, this made $7 million. N not on its opening weekend. It made $7 million in its entire run like in North America. I guess no one else cared about this movie. In this movie, we follow Seiya, this orphan who is dancing, I guess, and is, gets in, into fights, he's part of a fight club, and during one of his matches, he he ends up getting powers of some sort. I, I, I tried to figure out what it is, apparently it's called Cosmo in the movie, they didn't really like hammer that home that much in this movie, but... Apparently he is tracked down by Sean Bean, and, and it is now this orphan Seiya. It is now his life mission to protect a reincarnation of Athena, like, like the gods, and was sent to watch and save humanity. I also decided to look up the name of the director of this movie. His name is Tomasz Baginski. I don't know Polish, because that's a Polish name. I don't know how to speak Polish, so I'm pretty sure I butchered that. But I also decided to look up what else he's done, and this is his first movie, and apparently he has a good hold in CD Projekt Red, because he directed the game intros for all three Witcher games, along with a, the, the very first teaser trailer for Cyberpunk 2077, which I think was in back like 2012 or 2013 or something. And he's also a producer on the Witcher Netflix series. So this is his first big di movie director debut. He apparently had done a bunch of short films as well, and boy, you can tell this is his first uh, movie. Because... Huh. I'm gonna get the good stuff out of the way first. I actually thought the action and choreography was pretty cool. I think it was stylized in a nice way. Very much like an, like an anime come to life. And I, and I thought that was actually surprisingly well done. I liked McKenyu, who played Seiya. I don't really know what else he's been in. Apparently he's pretty big over in Japan. And I, I liked him as the lead. He, he had pretty good charisma. Uh, I don't know if he had chemistry with every single actor, but I was not cringing when I watched him, so that's a plus. I'd also like to shout out Mark the Cas Mark the Cascos, mainly because... It just seemed like he really wanted to be there for this movie, and he gets a couple good action scenes. He's like the bodyguard, well, he's like Sean Bean's bodyguard, and he gets a couple of pretty cool action scenes in this, and it and it seemed like he really cared into putting, giving it his all in this movie, and I appreciate that whenever any actor does that in the movie. I'm afraid that that's where my praise ends for this, because th this is a rough one. A lot of the dialogue in this movie just feels like mid-2000s schlock. Like, it honestly reminded me of that string of comic book movies, like, before Iron Man and a little bit after, like, say, Blade or something, that just really... Oh, no, actually, in between 
the Tobey Spider-Man movies and Iron Man, where they were all like this specific thing trying to rip off, or not rip off, but like take inspiration from those Tobey Spider-Man movies. And it had that, even in the dialogue, it had that weird corny feeling to it that really only a director like Sam Raimi could pull off. And it felt really weird. It also doesn't help that the actual visual effects were not that great, too. It feels like something that can, that would be right out of a PS2 game. Femke Jansen plays the villain in this. Uh, her name's Garad. And I think she does the best that she's given, given with the script. But the script is just so bad, especially surprisingly for a villain that I still think Famke Jensen did a decent job with whatever awful, like, like direction she got. I also want to point out uh, Diego Tanako. Uh, I have no idea who he is, and I don't know what else he's been in either. So this could have just been, like, a bad performance, like, for him, or he was, like, on, on an off day for every take they had. But... He, he kind of rivals uh, The weekend in The Idol show as just one of the worst performances this year. I don't even remember this character's name, but he plays a garage, like, right-hand man. And he's really bad in this. <laughs> like, I, the, the, you know, I, I said that I wasn't visually cringing when uh, Saya was on the screen because I feel like McKenna was doing a good job with what he got. But... The Diego Tanako's character got awful on the level of Garan's character of writing, which is bad, but also did a horrible job. So it was a, a mishmash of something really insane. I guess there's not much else to say about Knights of the Zodiac. I think this was like a really bland movie. I think a lot of the action is pretty cool, though. I will give it that. But outside of that, and McKenyu's performance, this just was really, really boring. <laughs> this barely did anything for me. And that's not even including the fact that this is an adaptation of, of, of a manga or, or an anime. I don't even know if this had an anime adaptation. I'm sure it did. That's how much I know about uh, like Saint Seiya and Knights of the Zodiac. If it's this bad on its own, I wonder how bad it is compared to, like, 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 like the actual source material. Because if we're talking about like Dragon Ball Evolution stuff, kind of here, wow, <laughs> I, I'm I'm sorry. I'm gonna give Knights of the Zodiac a three out of ten. Uh, it doesn't. It's not the worst thing I've seen this year, mainly because of the action. But this is just not worth your time and. Watching this on a whim really kind of sucked the soul out of me. But even then, if I went to go see this in a the theater, I, I I probably would have died. My question for you is, what's your favorite anime? I haven't really talked about it that much. Uh, I am currently in the latest season of My Hero Academia right now. I'm going to try and finish it before the new season comes out later this year. But I, I just got to ask, what is your favorite anime if you watch it? Uh, let me know what you think of the, my question and Knights of the Zodiac if you've seen it in the comments below. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video. See ya!